from EPAWA Weather Consulting, headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania. This is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting, LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to you. Another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 9th. And we're going to get into the next several weeks and uh, when we can expect a return to the wintry threats. We had one uh, outlined for a while that is actually affecting areas well south of here across the Carolinas today uh, and, and southern Virginia. Uh, but that, uh, that was a signal. The storm did materialize. It just didn't reach this area. So we're going to look ahead to where the next signals are and uh, take a look specifically the next couple of weeks. And uh, here's the long range that we did on Friday, very similar to what uh, we're looking at this morning. Not, not real change, no, no real change here. It does look like we are still uh, in the below average category through about Thursday here. And that's after that point, we get into a milder stretch. I uh, might have a transient break of a day or so mixed in there, but the general idea is between the 14th and 23rd or thereabout, we're going to be milder than average for a change uh, after we've been below average for quite some time. And much of the month of November was that way. Had a few warmer days in there, but for the most part, we were below average. And then December, of course, is starting out that way as well. Uh, this period was expected, this 14th to 23rd period. It was just a question of how long it would last, and it does look like once we get past the 23rd uh, and we get into that final week of December that we are going to go to uh, near, maybe even slightly below average. So I'm going to discuss some of those things that would lead us to believe that this is going to occur. Uh, this is going against the climate models that are showing this period as mild. I don't think so. Okay, and I'll show you why. So uh, we're also keeping that slightly below average outlook going into the beginning of January. Again, against the climate models that are saying otherwise. Uh, specifically, the Euro weeklies are saying uh, it's going to be mild all the way up through this entire period. I don't think so. I don't think it lasts that long. And then uh, January as a whole, we have slightly below average for temperatures after this month ends up just uh, just near to slightly above. Uh, so we will get colder as we hit in January. I think January is going to be a pretty cold month here. Uh, and you're probably like, no kidding, it's January. Well, it's going to be, I'm talking about relative to average. Uh, what's considered normal in January is already cold to begin with. We're going to go even colder uh, for, for average highs for the entire month. So let's start off looking at the driving forces of the atmosphere, what's getting this to uh, where we are now. Uh, we are in a phase three right now, the Mount Julian Oscillation. That's because the, and that's your best convection is out here in the, in the uh, Indian Ocean. And you got some nonsense out here, and you have some stuff south of the equator. This would not play in the Manajolian Oscillation because it's south of the equator. It's about 20 degrees south. So we're looking at everything up here near the equator. This here is the most dominant feature, so that is a phase three look. So if you look on the, uh, on the, on the scale here, this is the Indian Ocean phase three, and that's where we are right now. Uh, not really a strong signal, though. If you see, this is not some you know really bright convection out here, so there's not, uh, it's not an overwhelming uh, Manajolian Oscillation signal. So uh, but anyway, the, what, what we're looking at in the months of December, January, and February, phase three, you get kind of a milder look. Not overwhelmingly mild, but mild nevertheless. And, uh, so, and then it, it's expected over the next couple of weeks to go into phase four. And then after that point, it might go back into the circle of death where it doesn't really have an effect on the pattern. But phase three, phase four, uh, semi-mild and milder. Uh, phase four, of course, is a mild, uh, mild look across the region. So if we get into phase five, that's another mild look too. So uh, the next couple of weeks, we're expecting that. And uh, that goes through about the 23rd. But again, I think that's short-lived, and I'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, so here's the look at the mild air returning. This is looking at the 14th, and this is after that, after we're cold through about Thursday or so. This is going into next weekend. So you see the mild air belt building across uh, Canada. And this, of course, is, is uh, mild relative to average. So this doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it could be bright reds up here, and it could be st still below freezing and snowing up here because there's, you know, there's relative average up there. Instead of being 10 degrees for a high, it might be 25, you know, but it's still below freezing. So it's a little, a little deceiving. This is an anomaly, okay? And then we go into uh, the, um, the later period. This is actually looking at uh, the 20, this is December 22nd when the mild air is about to move out. You see all this area out, this uh, below average out here. This is in the process. If you could look, if I could have put this in motion, you would see that this is all moving eastward, and we're expecting that to arrive around the 23rd or 24th. So it's going to be right in time for uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas, to, at least to be on the colder side, at least feel colder. And I'm not certain about a uh, a winter storm threat yet. But we do have the period between. 
about New Year's Eve, or excuse me, Christmas Eve and uh, and New Year's, that whole last month of December as a possible uh, storm signal time frame for one or maybe a couple systems. But uh, we'll have to watch that time period closely. Does it get in here by Christmas, give you a white Christmas? I don't know that yet. Uh, but the, when we're talking about storm signals, uh, there, there's a signal there of something during that week. It might not be that early, uh, but we'll have uh, something that probably hits this this region when it's colder relative to average uh, past uh, past the 23rd. So, <coughs> excuse me. Once we get to, sorry, I'm getting getting a cold here. Uh, the 23rd is where we had the slight, uh, slightly above average temperatures, and then after that point is when we go slightly below. And we're starting to see that on the ensembles here. They're starting to hint at that now, even though the uh, Euro Weekly is the last time they ran. We're showing a mild look all the way to the beginning of January. Again, I don't think that's correct. Going uh, back to our 2014-2015 winter analog, everybody's so gung ho about 2002-2003 being the number one. You know what? We actually, I mean, that was probably our number one too. Looking at it initially. Uh, but uh, this is how November turned out across uh, in 2014. This was very close to what happened here this year, in November 2014. Look what it did, though, in December. That is above average look. So this period here, uh, very similar. That's very similar. Okay. Uh, the only difference is I don't think it lasts as long for the entire month to get these temperature anomalies this high above average, plus four to plus six. That's going to be tough. Okay, that's going to be a little tough. I know we are going to slightly above average, and we're going to be there from the 14th to about the 23rd or so. Uh, but after that point, I don't think it, uh, it the last week of the month might uh, bring these down a little bit. It might not be quite as warm as 2014. And one of those things that can change uh, the Manageline Oscillation warmer looks that we have is the stratosphere, if the stratosphere can help. And we'll get into that in a second here, too. First, the El Nino in the Pacific. Uh, this is the change from last week. We're getting to a more... Uh, favorable uh, temperature configuration out here in the Pacific. So we were looking at these warmer temperatures being out of the sea surface temperatures along the equator being out in these regions. Now starting to shift west a little bit. This is a little bit earlier than this 2014-2015 period. This didn't happen until January where everything started shifting westward. All right, so this is happening a little bit earlier. Today's only December 9th. We're already seeing that shift westward. Is this And this is over two straight weeks, so I can actually call this kind of a semi-trend. We were uh, warmer up here in the right off the Peruvian coast, and now we're starting to get that bit of back off in here in the Nino 3 and 3.4 regions where it's exactly where we want it to be. Uh, the warmest temperatures are now in, in the central and western portions of the uh, Pacific, and that's exactly where what happened in 2014. It's amazing how this is, how close of, of an analog this is. Uh, the only difference is we didn't have a stratospheric warming uh, event in in uh, December 2014 to kind of help us out and get us out of this warmth. Now, we did change in, in January to the January 2015 and then stayed that way the rest of the winter. It was cold and snowy the rest of the winter. We had some uh, well above average snowfall uh, occurred that winter. Now, we already had a jump start this year with that November storm. So we're already ahead of that. Uh, we might actually end up with more snow than seen in 2014, 2015 winter this year. But it's amazing how it's behaving very similarly, uh, at least from a sea surface temperature anomaly perspective. Uh, but also that just the temperature configurations that we've seen so far, uh, it's just a matter of how long does this warm air last? I do think we have uh, the warmer than average temperatures coming in here for the next you know, week to 10 days or so thereabout. But then we have signs that we're going to have a uh, stratospheric warming event that is going to displace some of this colder air away from the polar regions. Now, a lot of you have been asking about this. I was, I, we talk about this in a long range. I actually mentioned this by name in the long rate, written long range outlook. And uh, some of you actually take the time to read that, uh, but you had questions about what the stratospheric warming does. Okay, so uh, just imagine like all the all the cold air obviously is up at the up at the poles, North Pole, South Pole. Okay, around the polar regions there is the Arctic. You have very very cold. The coldest air in the in the world in the globally are found in the North and South Pole. All right, everybody knows that. Okay, so when you go up in the stratosphere, that's the, the level of the atmosphere above the troposphere, and you have a warming event like this, what it's going to do is it forces the cold air that is locked up in the polar regions at a much further south latitude than it normally is. Okay, so it's going to force us away from the poles as the stratosphere warms. It, it uh, downwells and pushes all that cold air away from the polar regions and further southward to the lower latitudes. Now, sometimes it's over in Asia and Siberia. Sometimes it's uh, over here in the eastern United States, and that, or actually where we are, or somewhere in the United States, somewhere in North America. And I think that's going to be, end up being the case. 
And uh, these are some plots put out by, uh, and, th and thankfully, Dr. Dr. Judah Cohen's working this morning because he puts out these really great graphics. I like to uh, steal, but I do want to give him credit for putting these out. This is his company, uh, or at least his company he works for. And you can see the GFS uh, uh, mean polar cap height showing that they're going to have this. Uh, here's that warming episode coming in here, right here towards the middle of the month, and it's down only pretty far. So we don't have, we do expect it to displace that cold air. That's not an issue. Sometimes these don't downwell all the way. Uh, it does look like it's going to do that. And then going ahead into January, this is a really good graphic. This thing gets established. This this is just moving in right here at this point. Uh, once we get later in the month, it kind of sits right over directly over the pole. It just sits there. And this is the CFS forecast for January 2019. This is kind of at a range of the way he states it uh, when he posts this. This is actually uh, suggestive of uh, this is suggestive of something that is a little bit more trustworthy at this range for the CFS. Sometimes the CFS does things goofy when you get a little bit in the longer range. This does. This is at a, a, a viable range now where you start taking this seriously, and it's certainly heading in that direction. Okay, so this is not an unbelievable thing to see this in January, but this is what the January looks like. Uh, it's slightly below average that we have, and temperatures might not be good enough. It might be a lot colder than we thought. So we'll see. I don't want to go there yet, but just something to watch. Uh, things are leaning more cold. Uh, on the colder side of average than uh, the warm side after you get past the 23rd. Uh, but it does look like this is coming coming in because of the stratospheric warming event. This can actually trump the Mount and Julian Oscillation. It could be, you know, over here phase four, phase five, which is usually warm. But if you have a strat uh, stratospheric warming event, that's gonna it can, it can counterbalance this and uh, turn it around to something else, which is a much colder look in the eastern United States if it downwells correctly so it's a lot of things we have to wait and see i know it's a lot of information i just gave you there a lot of uh, people are probably like what's he talking about here but uh just to get the idea is the 23rd this is lay terms here the 23rd through the 23rd is warm after that point there's gonna be colder risk colder relative to average it's already cold at the end of december colder relative to average temperature risk are greater than the milder risk as we get into later in the month and we have the chance and that goes right into january uh where january is going to be a below average month and the snowfall is going to pick up because obviously, you know, we're, we're colder than average at the already colder, coldest time frame of the year. So a well, much better chance that you have an opportunity for uh, for some snowfall to come back into the picture again. I know we missed out on this one this weekend, which is down down south here, um, you know, but there's going to be plenty of opportunity. So don't, don't fret. If we, we went back to 2014, 2015, that analog that I compared, not much snow, hardly anything through the month of the entire, my entire month of December. Once we get into January, February, March, it really picked up. So this, and still following that same analog very, very closely. So I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be busy uh, going forward here. And it might start a little bit earlier, a week or so earlier, uh, the end of uh, the end of the last week of December, uh, between Christmas and New Year's, basically. So we have some storm threats coming back into the picture there. Uh, it's a storm signal. And this is that system to the south here. This I want to explain just really quickly that the difference between a localized storm versus a storm signal. Uh, when we do the long range outlooks and we have a winter storm signal listed, uh, it just means that conditions are going to be favorable to produce a storm somewhere that would threaten our area. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hit this area directly. And this came awfully close. This is only a difference of you know a couple hundred miles here. But when you're looking three weeks in advance, we saw we were able to see this system being here somewhere. Okay, it just doesn't always work out that it hits our area exactly, and it's going to stay suppressed to the south because of confluence and other things that are going on over the northeast United States. Uh, but uh, there's going to be plenty of these signals left. So we put an outline signal between the 20th, I think we did the 24th and the 30th, which is the last week of December. Uh, it doesn't mean that every single day in that period you're going to see snow, and it doesn't mean that you're definitely going to get a winter storm at your house, at your backyard, wherever that may be within our coverage area. It could be further south, could be further north, could be rain, you know. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be rain in this time frame, but I'm just saying. I'm you know, trying to give you an idea. It's giving a signal is the atmospheric conditions are favorable, just kind of like when you're doing a, a severe thunderstorm watch in the, in, in, the, uh, in the summertime. It doesn't mean you're going to get a severe thunderstorm at your house, okay. It just means condition, atmospheric conditions are favorable to see severe weather. If one hits your, your area, it could be severe uh, look out for the potential for X, Y, and Z. Okay, same thing, except we're looking at this at three weeks, not the same day. All right, so keep that in mind. When we list storm signals, uh, and some people are confused by that, think, well, you said we're going to get a storm. No, I didn't say we're going to get a storm. We were very careful not to say that. Uh, and the good thing about these videos, I do these daily, and you the, the, the daily forecast videos I do, 
uh, daily. And uh, these weather weekly videos every Sunday. You can always check tape. You don't believe me? Go back. It's there. It's archived. It's on YouTube. Okay. I never said, hey, we're going to get hit with a, with a storm. So just be careful. We're very careful what we say until we know something's imminent. Then we start talking a little bit more with a little more certain terms. So just keep that in mind. Storm signal is, is, a, is a long range term that we use that this period is favorable between, and of course, this one says between the 24th and 30th. It uh, doesn't necessarily mean storm, but I, I do like that period as the next time frame to watch. So summarize it today, colder than average temperatures are through, through midweek, maybe Thursday, and then a milder period enters through the 23rd, uh, between the 14th and 23rd is the time frame we're looking at, and then it goes back to cold. So uh, next weekend system comes in at a time when milder air is in place, and that's likely a rain event region-wide. I don't see any wintry precipitation coming with that, but we will keep an eye on that. It looks like rain, uh, I think most likely time frame is going to be say late Friday afternoon or evening through about Saturday morning. I know the GFS is trying to keep some nonsense going all, all weekend long. Uh, not impossible, but I don't. we're not siding with that right now. I think it's just a kind of late afternoon or evening Friday through Saturday morning deal as far as the rain is concerned, but just rain. Too mild at that time. Uh, next winter storm signal time frame to watch is the last week of December, generally between Christmas and New Year's. We're going to watch that period closely for that opportunity. Uh, if you're not part of the EPA WA Premium Forum, you're missing out as far as our uh, detailed model analysis that we do ahead of every storm. We actually had it ahead of this system this week. We were talking about it, but uh, you know, we we got to a certain point where we realized it wasn't going to end up happening. So we didn't have a full uh, comprehensive model analysis, but there's going to be plenty of opportunity going forward, let's I just explain. And uh, if you don't have the text alerts or the and or the premium form, you have to get these bundled together at a discounted rate uh, on the on the My Pocket Meteorologist page. But these are the alerts that come directly to you with exact timing and changeover and things like that for any storms coming in for your specific area, not for a broad region. It's for your area specifically that you sign up for. And the premium form is where we talk about it well in advance. We do not do this publicly. So uh, check this out. Uh, this is the image below the video. Click on it. We'll bring the information to the My Pocket Meteorologist Winter Alerts Program. And uh, we well, can bundle these together at a discount as well. So please do check that out if you haven't done so already. And uh, that is the image bo just by clicking the image below this video uh, once it's complete, which it is. I will see you guys next week. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, December 9th. Take care.